What is a seemingly mundane question you can ask somebody that will tell you a lot about their personality? Saving this thread for my next human interaction. I foresee much less awkward silence. Wish me luck. Favorite compliment they've ever received. It tells you a lot about what people think of themselves, and what they tend to value. What do you know Tim Curry from? Edit, wow. RIP Inbox. Thanks for the award. How would you describe the internet to a caveman? It will show you how they look at what the internet is used for. For example, some might say it's a source of information, or it's a way to connect people who are far away. I know one person who said they wouldn't explain it to a caveman because they wouldn't go back in time without AC. Got this one in an interview once how do you go about eating a muffin? Learned a lot about muffin anatomy that day. It was a bakery after all. Edit, the bottom is also called a stem BTW. Just in case anyone needs some muffin trivia in their back pocket edit too, also known as stumps, yes. This was a highfalutin place so they preferred to refer to them as stems. Did I just see you digging through the trash? What are you having for dinner tonight? It's really cool to hear about what people like, what their culture is like, because food is a huge part of that, and generally just how they live. Expensive or cheap? Quick or elaborate? Adventurous or safe? What was the last thing you did that gave you childlike joy? I had a TA ask me in a get to know you activity what my vision was for a perfect world. And I said round lol. What would you do if you won the lottery? For me, it's a non-invasive way of listening to people's attitudes on finance in general, and also how they feel about the rich. What superpower they want? What book would you like to live in? Fav question I heard in an interview, what would you do if you came home and found a penguin in your freezer? It ends up not only being an icebreaker, but a good personality tell. Does my Kwiatkowski blink or wink? My father-in-law went on a job interview about 10 years ago and absolutely nailed the interview, as he was being shown around the office a high-level person in that company who normally wasn't there just happened to be there that day. After they were introduced he asked my Phil what kind of animal he would be. My Phil said he panicked and picked bear he's a bigger guy, and the other guy said something along the lines of that's a little too aggressive maybe this isn't the job for you. So he didn't get the job, but I guess it worked out because he's got a pretty good job now and if I was him I wouldn't want to work for someone who hires people based on what animal they think they would be. Are you in favor of homeowner associations? What does HP stand for? Where were you the night of the murder? What soup they like? As a kid, what was your go-to selection from the ice cream truck? Ask them what they like to cook for breakfast. Do you prefer night or day? What is a seemingly mundane question you can ask somebody that will tell you a lot about their personality? My husband used to work for Bed Bath and blah blah. He told me part of his job was to put carts away. He said that was his favorite part about the job, wasting time walking around the parking lot finding carts and putting them away. He got to be outside, chill by himself, not have to deal with other worse tasks etc. Of course this story only came up after I gave him some shit for not putting the cart back one time. This story was his elaborate rationale for not putting a cart back and to prove he was in fact a nice normal compassionate human. Normally, a fastidious cart returner, I started to leave my cart. Thinking I was actually being nice and even more compassionate than ever before. I probably only did it 2-5x until I realized, he's just an asshole. Who has now made me into an even bigger asshole. I now get to think about how much we are both assholes in our own ways every time I return a cart. It's not a single question but by the second or third date with a guy I would ask him to go bowling. As it turns out there's many ways to play the game. Do they take it too seriously and get competitive or angry if they don't do well? Does he act disinterested or bored of the game? Do they try to teach me how to play or do they just try to be goofy have fun with it? Do they order two pitchers of beer and get totally smashed? In my opinion you can learn a lot about a person by the way they approach bowling. What's your favorite dinosaur? 
In my last year of college, I took a prehistoric history class and was loving it. I, a history major, commuted by light rail to school and would end up spending the hour or so on the train congregating with other history majors. One day, I asked this group, what's your favorite dinosaur? Most of the people gave answers like velociraptors or that they hadn't really been interested in dinosaurs since they were kids, which was fair enough. But one guy said, I don't believe in dinosaurs and that the earth was 6,000 years old. This was a guy that was studying history, for the sake of teaching children history, and he was denying that most of the earth's history didn't exist, despite learning otherwise in the classes he was specializing in. I lost a lot of respect for him that day, and now, having a favorite dinosaur is a barometer test of mine. Edit, thanks for the awards, but please don't feel the need to spend money like that for Reddit towards my favorite is the Archaeopteryx, but I usually tell people that I like the Brontomerus since its name means thunder thighs. Edit 2, yes, dinosaurs are technically prehistory, I did not use history correctly in the academic sense. I appreciate you all for pointing it out since it was a teachable moment, but I would love it even more if you could also include your favorite dinosaur with your comment pointing that out, D. In a job interview, ask your prospective supervisor how much vacation time and sick days they took last year. This is great because both extremes take pride in their answer and so will answer honestly. The no slash low vacation boss is proud of how hard she or he works but really it's bad if they don't take time off. They're coming in when they're sick, they're not recharging by taking vacation, and the expectation, even if unstated, is that their staff should follow that example. You'll feel guilty every time you call in sick or take vacation time. You want the boss who says I always take my vacation time and encourage my staff to as well. I called in a couple times last year when I came down with a cold. Good boss. Do you put the cart back when you're done shopping? One of my standard job interview questions is tell me about something you like doing that you're good at. I don't really care what the answer is. I just want to see passion, effort, and creativity. Ooh squirrel, then check to see if they get excited at the prospect of a squirrel. My girlfriend's dad always uses one interview question that makes or breaks a possible hire. Why are manhole covers round? The goal isn't to know the answer it's to show that you are willing to critically think about a problem before you say you need help. Edit, spelling. And thank you for the silver kind stranger. Do you sleep with your socks on? Yes or no? Do you have read it? Alternative phrasing, how do you judge people as fast as possible? What's the last thing you did for the first time? Grilled cheese sandwich, or a taco? Who wins in a fight? If dogs wore pants, would they wear them on all four legs? Or just the back legs? My co-worker asked me how I was doing and I randomly blurted out I want to die. We've been dating for nearly two years now. Yeah like jazz? What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? If they know, that will tell me a lot. Edit, apparently, I didn't put the word velocity in there at first. Ha ha their favorite color. In so many ways if they tell you without hesitating, it means they must have probably thought about it before, and it must be a color they really like, that makes them feel at home or makes them happy. Whenever I meet someone and they tell me their favorite color it becomes a part of them to me. If you could be an animal, what animal and why? Young and old, it's a fun question that tells something about a person. Asking about why something ended. Be it a past job or a relationship, you learn a lot pretty quickly about someone. When I was a manager in retail I used to ask the question what was the last thing you've ever stolen? During interviews. I was asked it during a previous interview for a job and I asked my manager why she asked it. It's a good way to tell if someone is capable of being honest and accountable in a situation that may not have favorable results, i.e., screwing up the interview. I noticed that most of my associates that answered the question honestly would usually own up to mistakes made on the job and wouldn't try to lie their way out of problems or throw others under the buzz. Edit, to add a few clarifications for some of the comments I saw it was never poised to be a gotcha. 
question. I'd only ever used someone's response against them a couple times, one in particular admitted to stealing clothes from the previous store they worked at and would forget to pay for them. It was a question that was derived from our manager interview questions sheet we filled out when interviewing candidates. The original question was have you ever stolen anything? And we were allowed to modify wording of the questions as long as they were in reason. It's not a question that was only asked of certain candidates. If you interviewed at our store, you were asked that question, doesn't matter who you are or what position it was for. Being asked if you've ever stolen is a very very common question asked during interviews where you are dealing with money, or in retail of some sort. A lot of companies have to deal with internal theft as well as external, internal equals employee theft, external equals customer theft, and it's generally asked to make sure someone won't be a risk for internal theft. I would use the question as a way to gauge if I could believe someone to be honest if a mistake occurred and having a sense of accountability. If someone replied they never stolen or couldn't remember, I would use how confident they were in their response. It was very easy to tell if someone was sincere or not. It's not meant to be an offensive question. When interviewing a candidate, I need to get to know you. No one looks like they steal, much like no one looks like they commit any crime. I literally have no idea if you steal or not. It was a question asked if every single person interviewing for our company among a million other questions. I would usually follow up with my personal answer that stole a CD from Walmart when I was 16. I wanted to make sure the candidate knew it was okay to answer that question. Background checks usually weren't run until the very end of the hiring process. We would conduct two separate manager interviews, and if we agreed we wanted to hire a candidate, we would reach out to HR to run all of that stuff before making the offer. We would generally never see the results of a background check as that was an HR thing. So we would have no idea if you were arrested for theft or anything like that when we conducted our manager interviews. And yes, I am aware that some companies do use this as something against you which I personally think is dumb, but with the few retail companies I worked for, it never was unless you gave a really incriminating answer. My experience is completely anecdotal to others. One I saw on a dating site of all places, I forgot the name of it, was, do you think the concept slash consequences of a post-apocalyptic world is, in some ways, interesting? And it really resonated with me. It shows whether a person is interested in abstract thinking and imagining. Most people on the site voted no. I even had a conversation with someone who was like no? Why would you want the world to end? I don't, but the idea of how it would be like, how the world ended, what society looks like afterwards, is interesting. I probably don't match up well with anyone who would vote no to that question. What's your favorite book? I've shared this before, but I feel it's pretty relevant and a great way to find out more about a person. Years ago I went out on a first date with this girl I met online. I thought she was very attractive and we had so much common that I thought she was perfect. In addition to that we seemed to hit off well through texts, so I figured this date would go well. We're at this bar and she suggests we play a people watching game where we try to make up backstories for the other people there. I thought it sounded fun, especially since I played a similar game with friends on the train sometimes. Plus it felt like a good icebreaker to get us talking. Well, she managed to take all the fun out the game by being ridiculously cruel in all her assumptions for no real reason at all. It felt like she was projecting issues she had onto these people. Like one guy was sitting at the bar alone, could have been waiting for someone, you never know, but because he was alone he was a fucking loser, with no friends that hates his life. I tried to steer the game back to a more light-hearted mood, but she was set on being mean. Completely killed the mood and after that I lost all interest in her. I just couldn't see myself going on a second date with someone like that, even if she checked all other boxes. However, I did learn that it's a dumb and usually fun game you can use that will really tell you a lot about a person and how well you get along with them. You're in a desert, walking along in the sand when all of a sudden you look down and see a tortoise. It's crawling toward you and you reach down and you flip the tortoise over on its back. 
The tortoise lays on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun, beating its legs trying to turn itself over but it can't. Not without your help. But you're not helping. Why aren't you helping? When was the last time someone pissed you off? Cereal or milk first? Do you install your toilet paper with the flap over or under? If they say under they're heathens. If you were a soup, what kind would you be? Honestly, really tells you about them. What's a situation where you realized oh shit, I'm the asshole here. Way too many people try to give a clearly made up story, or one where they still come out as the hero somehow. A few will tell a story where they were a total jackass, but use it as an excuse to brag. It's rare you get someone who admits to a time they well and truly fucked up and were in the wrong. Do you have pets? A woman goes to her father's funeral. While she's there, she meets the man of her dreams. She knows for certain they're meant to be together forever, but she loses his contact information and can never find him again. Two weeks later, her brother dies. What happened? How much should I tip? I'm late as hell to this but. When it's 3 a.m. and you're driving and there's clearly no other cars in sight do you run red lights slash stop signs? I wouldn't judge a person harshly either way but it's a good conversation starter. Do you tip your server when the service has been terrible but you can tell that the restaurant slash kitchen is crazy busy? To follow up on everyone's answers with my personal choices I do live in a country where tipping is a part of the culture. I typically tip about 15 to 20 percent. I lower my tip if the service is bad, but not in the situation I explained above. I would assume that server is already have a very challenging shift and is probably getting a lot of grief about it. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Do you ever give money to homeless people you pass on the street? In my experience, there is a vast array of responses to this question and I think it can tell you a lot about their attitudes towards strangers and the extent that they generally give people the benefit of the doubt or generally expect that others don't have good intentions. I don't mean the yes or no answers, but the more detailed answers can provide a bit of insight. So for example, I asked somebody this one and their response was fuck no, I'm not funding their drug habit, and after that I began noticing that they also tended to comment derogatorily on strangers outfits, weights, appearances, etc. An opposite example is someone that said if I have it I do, I feel bad when I don't, and I've never heard this person make anywhere near the comments the other person had. It could be coincidence, but I think not. Do you use a turn signal? Tell me your first memory. What attracts you about a person? I suck at answering questions. What does that tell about my personality? Wow, coincidentally just had this conversation earlier today and my friend proposed, what topic could you give a 30 minute presentation on with no preparation? I thought it was genius. Which starter Pokemon did you pick? My favorite question to ask is which power puff girl is your fav? Or which color power ranger do you like more? I'd cry but I can tell a lot about people by that. If you could have two superpowers, what would they be? This give you a glimpse into someone's thought process. Based on their answers, you can sometimes tell what kind of thinker they are, if they're slow to trust, how creative they are, and what type of spirit they possess. I'm a teacher and typically ask this question to whatever grade I teach. It's amazing how from grade 1 to 12, I have never come across a class that didn't enjoy answering this question. But one thing always stand out and typically find these results the most accurate, the ones who choose invisibility are typically slow to trust slash shy, telepathy is usually the same way, super strength are typically the more bold, flight and magic are more of the ones who are distracted easily, telekinesis and super speed are the more logic based thinkers, shape shifters are the visual learners, and the ones that typically are the students that tend to excel are the ones who try and pair two powers together to make a better one. It's the best start to every school year that I look forward to. Do you smoke? If they say smoke what then they're a stoner. What ocean is between North America and Europe? The answer will either be the Atlantic, why would you ask such a basic question or why would I know that? It can't tell you how much someone knows about the world, 
but it can tell you how little they know. It's astonishing how many people won't be able to answer this question in any way, let alone be confident in their answer. How do you feel about LA? What's your opinion of Burning Man? Question mark carrot my first and second questions on a date. Edit, my former date questions. Married now to someone who answered them correctly. Have you ever joined an MLM? Anytime I need to make small talk I'll always ask if they say pop or soda. You always get a great conversation that way.